Welcome back to the Morning Woodward Show on the Woodward Sports Network, Detroit's all-digital sports network. Thank you to everybody that's listening on our app, which is free for download right now. And everybody checking in on social media, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter, at Woodward Sports. If you got any comments or you got any questions for Jimmy King, drop them in the comments right now because he's on the phone, Joey. He's here. Jimmy King, what up? What's going on, fellas? How y'all doing? Doing great, man. Getting ready for the first four playing games today. Um, and, you know, just ready for the greatest sporting event in the history of all sports, the NCAA tournament. Yeah, it's an exciting time of the year. Um, you know, it gets my blood flowing. Uh, you know, we obviously, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big part of my career. The NCAA tournament, having success there in my college days. Uh, it's exciting to see Juwan. And the Wolverines, the young Wolverine team, um, getting a number one seed. Uh, you know, unfortunately, with livers being out, it's going to be a, a monumental task. But just like Coach Howard and um, the rest of the team has been saying all year, their mantra is next man up. So we expect the young fellas to step up and take us deep into the tournament. Yeah, so last year when Jawan Howard was hired, um, you made the comment that Jawan being hired accelerates the process of the healing of the Fab Five in Michigan and all that. Um, how has that process been going over the past year? And are you feeling like, hey, man, the squad's back together, family's all here again, and we're ready to do this as a unit? <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's just public for uh, for everybody now, but we've been in talks for a long time. So the Fab Five... Um, you know, we're all in a group chat. You know, we all encourage each other, help each other on projects. So particularly right now, you know, watching Juwan, there's a lot of uh, uh, congratulations and uh, exciting texts going back and forth between the group. So, you know, for us, it's just like our playing days. It, you know, <clears throat> it's to be expected. This is not a surprise to me. It's not a surprise to us. Um, and I don't, I don't think it's a surprise to, to Coach Howard. He's very humble, but he knows uh, his pedigree. He knows that he knows how to teach the, teach the game and coach the game um, the right way. And, and as you can see, the results are, are positive. Yeah, I'm excited to see what Coach Juwan Howard does because, man, what he has been able to do in this short time with Michigan as the leader of the program has been so impressive. But we were watching Michigan ball the other day, and I actually texted you about this. Dickie V coming out to say that this Michigan basketball team might be better than the Fab Five. I just want to know what you think on that. Man, stop it. You know, you need, <laughs> you need some, some TV fodder every now and then. You know, you need something to talk about. You know, see, we're talking about that right now. It's a good, it's a good discussion. You know, they're number one seed, first number one seed since our days. Um, so, you know, they're... they're there are some parallels there as far as that concern, but as far as uh, the impact and uh, the speed and, um, you know, they play a different style. You know, we were more methodical. Um, we'll, we, we played inside out. Um, we'll beat you down with Chris and Juwan in the middle, and then we'll use our length on the outside uh, to take advantage of the small guards. But today's basketball is so wide open. You got big guys standing on the perimeter and shooting threes. You know, you got uh, guards slashing um, everywhere. Is is everything is motion? Um, so 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 really, honestly, I think it wouldn't even be a comparison. You know, if we played this style of basketball today, it'd be a problem because Chris <laughs> and Juwan, as you can see, or seen in their professional careers, you know, can step out and shoot twenty foot jumpers consistently. So if we had incorporated that in our offense, um, we would have been. We would have been unstoppable, and this team, this team couldn't match up with us. Hey, Jimmy, man, thanks for coming on. Like, you know, a couple of years ago, me and you spoke. I had to had to hound down your cousin Janelle to get you, but I got you back in contact. But you said this to me um, a couple of years ago when I was asking you about um, Juwan taking over as coach. You said Juwan's going to farewell simply because of the relationships he has, his extensive circle, and his reach. I don't think it would take long. I mean, per a perfect example is Penny Hardaway and what he's done in his time at the University of Memphis, his alma mater. I think that small litmus test has been proven. I think Juwan can emulate that and do the same thing here. What did you see, and you and your fellow, fellow Fab Five teammates see in Juwan that is kind of taking everybody else 
off guard and, and, and have them shocked at how far Michigan has come along so quickly. I love you pulled that quote. The, the second part to that is, um, is that people underestimate Juwan. I, I knew that people were going to underestimate him as far as him being a head coach, uh, not having a head coaching position before. Uh, being a former player, typically, well, I won't say typically, but we always hear stories of former players not being good management or coaches. So a lot of that was going against them. Um, it's prestigious, the University of Michigan, it's a lot of controversy um, or have been controversy in his playing days with the Fab Five and um, estranged years. So there was a lot of uh, doubt. There was a lot of, you know, questions and, you know, what type of head coach would he be? But knowing Juwan all my life, knowing him as a person, knowing how he prepares, I knew there won't be a coach in the college game that's more prepared than him. For instance, everywhere we go, even on his off days, and this is not for show, he carries his book of uh, plays, his book of, of, of uh, research with him everywhere. Whenever you see Juwan, he's carrying books studying the game even at dinner at nine o'clock at night so my thing is you know i don't believe anybody's going to outwork him and, and it's a testament to what he's done with having the number one recruiting class um yeah we heard that about Jawan. that like um he he is an absolute just fanatic and geek of the game and like you said he's carrying around playbooks he's carrying around his research for other teams so there's that side of Jawan. but i kind of want to focus on when Jawan and the maryland coach were kind of going at it and Jawan's like hey man i'm from chicago you stepped to me i'm stepping right back who do you think would have won that fight <laughs> <laughs> no question big Coach Nuki Howard. <laughs> he won that one. See, this is this is I re, I was watching that game. I happened to be in Detroit at the time. I was watching the game with a couple of my Wolverine football players, uh, Tony Blankenship and Lasker Smith, our former Wolverine brothers. And we were watching the game and when it went down, I I remember standing up and I was pointing at the TV and I was like, I know it's real because Coach Jay Smith got involved, who, who recruited us and who was our coach when we played here in Michigan. Um, he was the only one I felt that could really, you know, keep him at bay um, uh, just because of the relationship and the respect. Um, Juwan is a veteran. We've seen him play many years. We've never seen him react like that. So clearly um, there was something said and and, and for him, he said what the issue was. He said it at the podium. I don't know how you guys were raised. And this is what I was telling the guys. I was like, wait, he's going to tell the truth at the podium. He's going to tell exactly what happened. And he said that, you know, I don't know. My grandmother raised me. I don't know how you guys were raised. My grandmother raised me and Chicago raised me. And when somebody charges you, you defend yourself. And that's exactly what happened. He's, he's South Side Chicago. That's what he said. And that's exactly the truth. He's South Side Chicago first, but he, he carries around a lot of respect, he handles himself well, but don't charge him. <laughs> yeah, do not mess with Jawan. <laughs> I mean, look, look, just look at this picture of, of Coach Coach Mark Turgeon. Is that how you say it? Yep, Turgeon? Turgeon. Like, like Jawan Howard would whoop his ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of those you get lost in the look sauce moments. <laughs> like, I can do this. I can do this. Like, no, you can't. No, that, 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 would, that would look so so ugly. <laughs> Put you up see them gray hairs all over the floor after that fight. <laughs> hey, uh, what Coaches question? Get into it all the time. <laughs> all the time. Coaches, we, when we played uh, Coach Cheney, may he rest in peace, Temple University, uh, when that Coach Fisher, Jay Smith had to step in then too. <laughs> Jay Along Smith just us. plays Peacemaker. So, yes. Yes. Yo, so staying on, staying on Juwan. Recently, yesterday, some news broke out that he has a couple of NBA jobs that are trying to trying to go ahead and bring him back to the NBA as a head coach. Do you see Juwan leaving anytime soon to pursue those NBA jobs, or do you think he's going to try to stay at Michigan a little bit longer and get that job done there, especially with the recruiting classes that he has coming in? No, I, I believe he's going to stay. He's a 100% uh, committed guy. Um, you know, he... He's not going to abandon the number one recruiting class 
if if he was going to take a head coaching job in the NBA, I believe he would have took it two years ago prior. Um, this is the only job that he would take outside or that would be appealing to him, uh, you know, according to him. So, no, I don't see him jump his ship, abandon his ship uh, until the job is done. And even then, I still, you know, don't see it. I see him trying to build a dynasty, um, uh, you know, having top recruiting class after recruiting class and building Michigan up to a powerhouse as it should be. So one thing that I am a little bit worried about, because listen, before when I filled out this bracket, I was like, listen, Michigan all the way. I even got them as my winner right now. But there's one thing that I'm a little bit scared about, and it's Isaiah Livers and his return. How do you think Michigan's going to play? Because it's looking like he's not going to be back. How do you get, do you think that we'll, we'll do without him? Next man up, I think we'll be fine. I think the young players need to step up. Um, Williams, uh, Johns Jr., in particular, Brown. Um, I think those three guys in particular, if they step up and play uh, their games at a, at a high level for three weeks, we have a, we absolutely have a chance. Replacing a high, Isaiah Livers is impossible. His veteran um, leadership is something you cannot replace. For instance, like <clears throat> when those t when it gets hard to get a bucket in those times uh, during a game. He's the type of player that you can lean on. He'll alleviate a lot of those uh, dry spells just because of his experience and um, his shooting ability. Um, I think they'll miss that. But if if they stay out of that circumstance, then they got a chance. And, and the young guys got to step up. So, I mean, the first four playing games are today. You've obviously played in the NCAA tournament Um can you walk us through what these college kids are feeling going into this type of tournament? Do they, Are you feeling pressure? Are you feeling excitement? Is it a mix of both? Like, what are you feeling going into this tournament knowing that this could be your legacy forever? I, I don't know what they're feeling, but I know what I feel. Some guys, some guys, I guess, get a little nervous, but not me. It's excitement. This is what we work for. We're supposed to be here. We earned it. So let's go have fun. That's why... Uh, the energy and the the style that we had um, permeated throughout the screen so tough, you know, so hard. It was it was excitement. It was uh, it was it was you know let's do this. This is something that we've been practicing for all year. We've been dreaming about all our lives, all our high school careers and middle school careers. Watching the Georgetowns and Villanovas and St. Johns and you know uh, North Carolinas and all of that. So. Arizona's, you know, we wanted to be a part of that. So uh, for me, it was just excitement, ready to play. But I do think some guys get a little nervous. But again, once that ball go up um, or you catch that first elbow, um, <laughs> that first hard foul, you realize you're in the game. So so, so some people do get a little nervous, but not me. I love that. I embrace it. And it's fun. It's the biggest. It's, it's one of the best moments of your life. It's Hey, Jimmy, I got kind of two questions for you. First off, the, the first one is, who do you think could give Michigan some trouble? In, just looking at the bracket, who do you think could give them, them some trouble? And the second one, how would you feel if it's, 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 it can definitely happen, your guys ends up playing the Spartans in this tournament? <laughs> well, historically, teams that Michigan has issues with are long – athletic teams like Baylor's uh, guys that you know play good defense get out and run and slash on the offense uh, crash the boards offensively um, length uh, teams with length is is something that we have to uh, kind of look out for because we kind of play from the inside out you know we're a little bit more old school uh, with Dickinson in the middle he might step out and shoot a little bit but mainly his focus is you know in the paint area uh eight to eight to ten feet in uh but yeah this you know it's just the teams that with length and then again like for the past maybe four years five years it's been tough to pick a winner for me just because it's so wide open you can't really tell it's just one and done uh it's a lot of luck involved you know, the best team doesn't always win. That's the one thing about the tournament. That's what makes it exciting. Um, but 
you know, it's a toss up. Uh, I would say Baylor. Baylor is a tough one um, as far as matchups. So, Jimmy, obviously it's been a couple of years since you've played college ball, but there's something <laughs> that the NCAA has partnered up this year to give its players, and it's something that you did not have the luxury of having. Are you familiar with Cam Soda? <laughs> a what? Cam, Cam Soda. Soda. Yeah, we talked about what's, it this week. So I'm going to read just a headline. Cam don't 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 go to the website right now, but maybe later you could. <laughs> Cam Soda says free live sex cams, adult webcams, and live porn. And this is something where they worked out a partnership with the NCAA to give these students because they're not allowed to have guests inside of this NCAA bubble. Are you a little bit pissed that you did not get that same treatment from Cam Soda? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? What is going on here? Let me tell you something. They kept us so tight, locked up in a hotel room. We had police and managers at each end of the hallway. There was no fun. There was no, we couldn't even, you know, even back then the internet was just, <laughs> was just coming around, you know, so we didn't have those <laughs> options. That's, that's okay. I ain't mad at them. Whatever gets them focused, whatever they need. You know, I would love to see it. I'd love to check it out. You know, I'd love to, uh, you know, get my eye on it and see what type of uh, entertainment they got. But, wow. <laughs> Do you still have your University of Michigan email? <laughs> Did you can sign up. Yeah, I do. Oh, sign up! Oh, yeah. We got we the plug. plug. We got the plug. <laughs> oh, I'm, a, I'm gonna yeah, write. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna submit to, you. I'm gonna have to reactivate it. And see what's going on. <laughs> I'll shoot you guys some screenshots. <laughs> yeah, let us know how that goes, man. Because we thought it was a great offering by them. I heard there's someone by the name of Mercedes who's a really <laughs> lovely lady, Jimmy. No, it's Portia. Oh, Portia, my bad. Oh, Bentley too. Don't forget they Bentley. All, they all got car names <laughs> you never hear of a lady named toyota that's all good just stay away i mean you just know you can get that off of six months <laughs> <laughs> uh well i mean <laughs> uh thank you for that question we Joey. got the plug <laughs> we, so we got the right university now. of michigan email plug now baby <laughs> uh, uh have you filled out a bracket and do you fill out a bracket every year not the camp soda edition the ncaa do. one <laughs> i usually do i usually do fill out a bracket i have not yet I have not this year. Um, obviously, you know who my top choice is going to be. I just love going through and um, looking at the match matchups, uh, circling games. You know that I want to see. Obviously, um, can't catch them all. I mean, you can, but my schedule won't allow it anymore. So I try to circle the ones I want to see. But I'm definitely going to watch every Michigan game for sure. Awesome. Well, you know, one thing that's real cool is we teamed up with Hall Financial to do this perfect bracket payoff. And, you know, they say it's impossible to get that perfect bracket, but Hall Financial is giving you a chance to get $500,000 cash to pay off your mortgage. But you also get real prizes on top of that, like the PS5. You get the free pizza for a year. You get TVs. You got to fill out one of our brackets, and hopefully you could be that $500,000 winner, Jimmy. <laughs> For sure. Send it to me. I want to win that prize. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, so, yeah, man, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're doing now? Because I know we've we've talked about, like, your business venture and stuff like that. Like, you're really big on helping high school kids get recruited right now, right? Correct. So, um, I have a company, me and my partners, Isaiah Beauchamp and Melissa Sampy. We, we have a company, sports recruiting firm called True Champions. Um, you can check us out, truechampions.com. We help high school kids transition uh, to college. Uh, we help them earn college scholarships. Uh, doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't matter. Uh, we prefer you to be uh, a day outside of eighth grade. So once you graduate eighth grade, you can start your recruiting process. The earlier, the better. Uh, we have a unique process. We hold your hand through it. We teach the parents, uh, give them information on how to um, navigate the process and then we pass that down to the kids as an end user uh in the recruiting process so thank you for asking but it's near and dear to my heart it's a lot of fun because we help a lot of kids and a lot of families and i wanted to do this uh obviously to give back but to you know realize a lot of dreams there are a lot of kids out there that don't necessarily have to go to d1 
Um, D2, D3, NAIA, JUCO, those are all great opportunities. Uh, we're here to help, so uh, check us out. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And, you know, Joey and I and I'm, don't know much about Corey and his involvement with high school, but Joey and I helping out high school kids is like a huge initiative for us because for us, that's that's like the peak of where we went athletically. So high school ball still means the world to us. And for these kids to be able to extend that, like you said, it doesn't necessarily have to be Division One. You can go JUCO, you can go Division Two, and then maybe you hit your growth spurt like a Dennis Rodman, you know, six inches in a year. And next thing you know, you're getting drafted and you're in the NBA all because you stayed the course <laughs> especially That's I mean right. you, you look right. at the season right now that we're going through for these high school students they kind of need a true champions to really get that exposure right because right now they're not getting that exposure there's not really many scouts going to see those players that aren't like the Amani Bates of the world yeah. and those are the players that really need that yeah. extra push correct you want to give your chance give yourself a chance give yourself an opportunity and it becomes inundated it becomes uh confusing it becomes intimidating uh for families and kids to go through that process you may file something wrong you may miss a deadline uh you may get some misinformation there's a lot of things uh that you may have the correct steps but they may be in the wrong order um you may be listening to people who uh, you know are winging it family members friends uncles cousins brothers you know uh, they may mean well, but, you know, this is a, a, a process that you really have to pay attention to and you really have to have your ducks in order and in line um, to to get what you want, um, to go to the school and be recruited by, by the school that you, the program that you want to be. So it, it's just education. It's just an extension. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> It, it looked like uh, coaching, um, uh, you know. So, so we're we're coaching basically the the families, um, in, in the process and how to uh, get recruited. Hey Jimmy, I got one last question. When Juwan Howard got hired, War Emanuel said that he was going to try to get all the Fab Five together to recreate the iconic photo of you guys around the rim. How close are we to seeing that fit, that photo being redone? seeing that photo if it hadn't been for COVID. Oh, oh, oh. man. Because I used to have that photo in my room, like literally hanging on my wall, you know, with a little plaque underneath it that said Fab Five. Like that photo right there is about as iconic as it gets, man. And when you see that photo, <laughs> what do you think of? <laughs> I remember that day taking so many pictures that day. Like, <laughs> I was. I just remember being so tired. That's why I think at that picture we were done smiling. We're <laughs> it was over. I think that might have been one of the last pictures we took. But um, yeah, it was. I remember it was cold in the gym that day. Uh, we had taken hundreds of pictures all throughout the stadium. Gets man. And all when you see that everywhere. photo, what do you think of? Uh, like, like well, I think I think of the mission begins like when we started stop you know doing the photo ops <laughs> and, and taking pictures from magazines that's when the journey really started so right after that picture is when we got to work we went to practice and that's where the group the the the, the magic happened the, 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 the grind the, the grit you know the the uh enthusiasm the the hunger all of that uh was developed by pushing each other in practice so um, that was the beginning right there. That picture just reminds me of the beginning of uh, the work era for the Fab Five. Well, I can't thank you enough for your time today, man. It's, it's always great to talk to you, get your insight, not only on the Fab Five, but college basketball and how you're helping out high school kids. So I got to leave you one last question because it's the biggest game happening tonight here in the state of Michigan. Who you got, Michigan State or UCLA? I'm going with State. Yeah, with, all right. I'm going with... I'm going with MSU. I want them to be successful. I think Tom Izzo is a great coach. The coaching staff, I know a lot of the uh, players and, and coaching staff, a lot of the former players from Michigan State. Um, so I want them to be just as successful so that we can kick their ass again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely.
absolutely <laughs> love that response. Jimmy, we cannot thank you enough for your time this morning. I uh, hope you enjoy watching the tournament. And once again, you're welcome on this show anytime you want. Just call us and say, hey, I got something to say. And it's, awesome, it's, awesome. Anytime, anytime. Thank you, guys. Thank yeah. you hey, uh, Jimmy, you should be getting an email from camsoda.com right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just click verify, right, I'm please. Looking for it now. I'm looking for it. Don't be surprised if I become a spokesman, too. <laughs> <laughs> Help those college girls get recruited, too. That's what I'm saying. All you're doing is supporting these lovely ladies. That's it. <laughs> hey, you know, we could be like the outside HR service. There we <laughs> go. Wearing peaks, you know. <laughs> They need, they oh, that's awesome, services. man. Have a great day, Jimmy. Enjoy your basketball, man, and thank you for all you're doing for everybody. We appreciate you. All right, thanks, fellas. Talk to you soon. See you, Jimmy. Uh, how great is you. that to have Fab Five member Jimmy King on the day the tournament starts? Like, life is crazy sometimes, man, and it's great to have him on here. So I uh, wanted to ask for permission on this one because, you know, the, the, the Fab Five remake of, of that, I wanted to do a remake with Stick, myself, and then our – pickup squad that we did because i felt like we deserved it yeah yeah we didn't win our game but that's yeah. what i'm saying i mean we went zero and seven it's tough to do in the ferndale rec league exactly that's almost <laughs> harder to do just like having the worst bracket in our perfect bracket payoff and that wins you a toilet so woodwardsports.com make sure you fill out our bracket with Hall Financial. Heck yeah. And we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we went a little bit over with Jimmy King because the conversation was just so great. But it is time for Adam's Bets of the Day. And we're going to go over that next on the Woodward.